I seriously thought about not making this video. It sounded completely pointless. Going over a format we can't even play. But to give in to an epidemic is just like admitting defeat. And that's something that Yu-Gi-Oh players, let's just face it, we're not really good at. The thing that I love about this community the most is that when adversity hits, like every forbidden list that we've ever had, we always find a way to adapt and survive. Whether it's playing on online simulators to playing in person with social distancing or even just playing on FaceTime. I know it's weird, but people really do this. Players have definitely adapted to the current pandemic. And if Yugi can almost beat Kaiba with the virus, then why can't we? So in honor of you guys, we are going to be talking about the best decks post April Master Rule 2020 format. We've tested these strategies extensively and some of them seemed really good on paper. Other ones didn't seem good at all. These are the best of that. Of course, since this format is so diverse, I can't mention every strategy. I'm gonna need you guys' help. If you guys can post down below in the comment section which strategies you think are insanely competitive and why, that would be a great help to us all. Also, be sure to like this video and share it with a friend. Let's try to get everyone's dueling spirits up because while we can't go to events, that shouldn't stop us from playing Yu-Gi-Oh! The first strategy, you can see it in the stars, you can feel it in the constellation, it's a beast of a deck. It's Zodiac. Get it? Because like, stars and constellations and beast of a... I made a pun on their pun, and, and I'm pretty punny. Zodiac got a lot better, not only with the Master Rule implement change, but also the Forbidden List releasing Zodiac Dryad. Now at the cost of losing Zodiac Barrage, Zodiac can actually be a playable strategy instead of an engine in every deck. The main thesis of this deck is to summon Zodiac right into your side of the field with multiple materials. Now you accomplish multiple things by doing this. The first thing is that Zodiac Dryden can destroy multiple cards on the field, even though it is a hard once per turn. You're allowed to destroy one card on your turn and one card on your opponent's. The next thing is that you fuel your graveyard up for Pot of Avarice, which essentially plays into the Zodiac strategy. The deck has always been centered on gathering as many resources as possible. Those resources turn into hand traps and disruptor cards, while you can still sit on that one card combo, which is basically any Zodiac monster to make your Dryden disruption. The only weakness with Zodiac is its inconsistencies. Sometimes you don't draw a Zodiac, which is terrible. Sometimes you draw too many Zodiacs, which is just as bad. But other than that, Zodiacs are a genuine contender in the new Master Rule. This strategy can still Rex the format. Y you're gonna get this pun a little later. Dinos are a deck that did get a lot worse inside of Master Rule 2020, but it's no reason to its boss monster and ultimate conductor Tyranno. Now I say this in every video I mention Dinos, this card is a complete terror, so let's actually just move on past one of the best boss monsters and address some of Dinos weaknesses. The weakness is while other decks did get to play outside of their extra deck, being able to summon multiple fusions, synchros, or XC monsters without the requirement of links, dinos didn't necessarily get any stronger. And the main reason is because dinos can't consistently put multiple XC monsters on their side of the field. I still think that dinos have a place in this meta. They do get new support in the Eternity Code set, but for right now, they're progressively getting worse. Ironically, there is still a dino monster that players don't play that can literally swing for game. It is a one-man wrecking crew, and I played it inside of the live duel. You can go ahead and check it out. And for the people that wanted that profile, well, post down below in the comment section. A strategy that has actually gotten better, where players thought have gotten worse, is the Sky Striker strategy. This strategy is primed to be able to compete with the meta, mainly because of the new addition that it got off the Forbidden List and Sky Striker Mecha Widow Anchor. Some players may think that that's not enough, but it's actually huge for the strategy because Mecha Widow Anchor is a card to be able to negate one of your opponent's most crucial monster effects, but also has the ability to take control of that monster for your own doing. The next best thing about Sky Striker is that most strategies inside of Master Rule 5 want to summon a plethora of monsters to their side of the field. And most of the time, those strategies are all one type. In the coming, there can be only one, which not only ruins that for them, Sky Strikers can play perfectly fine under this particular card. The sky is the limit for this strategy. 
It seriously is an incredibly powerful deck. All of their spell cards do multiple things that help you gain advantage over the opponent. And its only weakness is those super huge unaffected monsters like Mech Knight Crusadia Abermax, which can't be targeted, or Raid Raptor Ultimate Falcon, cards that aren't really played a lot inside of the meta currently. Shadows necessarily didn't get better or worse inside of the new Master Roll. You can say that it got better because El Shadal Winda does prevent the opponent from special summoning in mass, but players were special summoning in mass inside of the Link era, and Shadal Winda pretty much does the exact same thing. There are also plenty of outs to El Shadal Winda. The same outs can be said for True King of All Calamity, which players are starting to take notice of and play more cards to counteract it. Shadal can work with so many different strategies, your opponent is going to have a hard time deciphering which one you're actually playing. You can use that to your advantage to make multiple variants as Trickstar, Invoked, Pure, and even Mech Knight Shadal are very viable. Heck, there's even Dino Shadal for the players that want to go Ultimate Conductor Tyranno and El Shadal Winda. More power to you. The biggest weakness for Shadal is to be able to fusion summon consistently. You can construct huge boards, but you have to get into your El Shadal construct. Get it? You see what I did there? C construct for construct. Shadal is still one of the more powerful decks in the format and doesn't look to go anywhere anytime soon. Another strategy that may surprise you, it's gotten significantly better inside of Master World 2020, is Cyber Dragon. Cyber Dragon now has the ability to go first. Players will really struggle against a true king of all calamity and Cyber Dragon Infinity, and this deck can do it fairly consistent. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you probably should check out the deck profile I have. It is crazy. I said that Cyber Dragons would be one of the top contenders inside of the meta if none of this got hit by the Forbidden List, and none of it actually got hit by the Forbidden List. The deck is also really good at going second because it's Cyber Dragon. Being able to Chimera Tech Mega Fleet Dragon your opponent or Chimera Tech Fortress Dragon your opponent depended on the situation. Now the only problem with Cyber Dragon is that it is very prone to hand traps. Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring on your machine duplication is probably the worst feeling ever. And also, Cyber Dragon can never be the best deck of the format. Because um the side decks are um Rocket Dragon Link is a deck that is primed for the best deck of the format spot. This deck got amazingly better inside of the new Master Roll because of its ability to be able to special summon those Synchro Monsters to your side of the field without the use of a Link. This frees up a lot of the deck's extra deck space and now you can dedicate some of those resources to being able to summon some of the more powerful Synchro Monsters to your side of the field to ruin your opponent's life points. The next buff is, of course, Pot of Avarice off the list. The biggest problem with Rocket Dragon Link is that after you make your first turn board, which is rather formidable, if your opponent was able to break it, you would struggle with the rest of the cards in your extra deck. Pot of Avarice not only gives you a new breath of life inside of the deck, being able to shuffle in those Dragon Link cards back into your extra deck, but it gives you two free resources on top of that. With the ability to make the same combo with multiple different hand sequences, you better watch out for Dragon Link. Its only genuine problem is probably going second against those other Break My Board decks, which I find is kind of funny. A strategy I feel that's going to come left field, no one's going to see this strategy coming, but it's stupid good, it's Mech Knights. Mech Knights are insanely powerful for a couple of reasons. The first reason is that nobody plays Columns anymore. Seriously, nobody expects this. So they set up Columns easily for you to win the game. And then when they do figure out you're playing Mech Knights, the problem has always been forcing you to go first. Something that Mech Knights have notoriously struggled with. But the problem with that now is that Mech Knights can make a true King of All Calamity and a Invoked Mechaba on turn one. Meaning that your opponent is going to have to respect your going first place because you can lock out all of their monster effects. I actually do have a sick Mech Knight deck profile coming up. I want you guys to sit back, relax, and enjoy the show when it does come out. The last strategy I want to talk to you guys about, probably the best deck of the format, like no cap, this deck is really good. 
Solomon Crate is a self-contained engine that can make some really good boards. The deck is fairly cheap. I mean, Cyanet Mining just got another reprint in Dual Overload, and you can play a plethora of hand traps to fit your palette. Now, I know I've said before that hand traps were terrible, but that was then. This is now. Formats change, metas change, opinions have to change. And hand traps are a little bit more deadlier than ever before because all of those decks that could play through hand traps or all of the cards that, th that allowed you to play through hand traps are severely hit. So Salomon Grade has a huge potential to not only help mitigate your opponent's board making skills, but also have the ability to make their own board and they're kind of immune to hand traps themselves. Solomon Great's only weakness, Nibiru. Because that, that is a hand trap that does exist. I said they're almost immune, and, and that hand trap exists. And um, that, that's Solomon bad for Solomon Great. That, that's not Solomon good. Thank you guys so much for watching another segment of the Cali Effect. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Of course, I also hope you guys are using preventative measures to stay safe, dueling with class, but also dueling with style. That was corny. I'll never do that again. Anyways, I hope you guys are having an amazing day, like I am.